on because George W. Bush once remarked that during their first meeting, he got a sense of Vladimir Putin's soul. Is Barack Obama likely to get a sense of the Putin soul this week, or is he simply looking for the Russians to help do something to stop the total destruction of Russia's ally Syria? What do you, what do you think Obama wants to get if they do go ahead, as everybody thinks, with a meeting? If they can find some common ground, if they could actually find some, some way to uh, reinforce each other's goals, to, to get rid of ISIS, to, to squelch ISIS, if they can find some sort of compromise on Assad, Maybe there's some way out of this mess that we've been living with for four and a half, five years. Meanwhile, the numbers of people building up on the camps outside of Syria are going through the roof. So this, this phenomenon of people coming into Europe is only going to accelerate. This is a slow burn, and maybe Obama and Putin can, can find some sort of compromise. I know the Americans were upset when, when Putin moved all this material in so quickly, but maybe there's some common ground. I think it's um, definitely they won't be looking into each other's eyes. I that, don't that, think that's, that's, gonna that's happen. for sure. What will happen is there will be a, a, a meeting which will be covered in a lot of uh, in his um, feeling of uh, cynicism from both sides, actually from Putin's side more than, than from anybody else's side. And I think it's, um, it's, it's a really great opportunity for both sides to achieve something um, that, will, uh, that will be useful for both. So Putin, obviously, sanctions, counter sanctions, Ukraine, Crimea, all that kind of thing, has been leading the country away from the West and, and for all sorts of reasons. Now there is an, a, an opportunity to re-engage, that's one, but also there is an opportunity, and I think that is a really important thing to clarify for especially Western audiences, is actually that um, Putin's messages are sometimes aimed at domestic audience. Yes. Almost we always, often forget almost, that, don't we? Almost, almost always um, aimed at domestic audiences, because every time they will be able to say, you know what, one, one blogger who works in one of the Oxford colleges for BBC Russian service website, he writes blog there, and he um, produced this amazing phrase. He said, he just needs to come to the General Assembly to stand there, not saying anything, and that will be already a historical moment. Because basically he will say, you know what, four and a half, year, four and a half years people were against us, they, they were against all that kind of stuff. Now you've got refugees, you've got uh, IS, you've got all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And here I am, I, and I am the only one person with a can-do attitude. Very well, interesting. We need, we need Putin desperately because he's the only conduct to Assad. I mean, Europe decide that Assad must go, but the calendar is negotiable. And it's the only way we can um, uh, try to do something about refugees, because even if Assad goes, the refugee question will stay. Because, and, be different, lots of and it will be even be worse, people. as you say, about Turkey and Lebanon, the camps will be empty. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, Europe had a plan about Quotas. <laughs> and it, like, it did very well. well it, <laughs> it was very difficult because Eastern Europe and have a different conception of a Europe. They want a Christian Europe, which we don't want. We want a multicultural Europe. But there is that plan. Will it work or not? We'll see. But it, Putin is the only hope to get to so, us. So well, Putin is the savior of Europe. Yeah. Um, well, I'm uh, not sure about right. that, but at least we have to know the refugee question is <laughs> he, the foremost if, in if Europe. If Europe has a plan, I would hate to see what not having a plan looked like. Right. I must say. I, I, but, I, but, I but you could say that. Solidarity, yeah, solidarity, because you yeah. don't know what it is. Solidarity, you know, the, the Britain take. No. 20,000 in five years, it's shameful. Okay, okay but right. let's get back, okay, let's get, back to Putin. Yes, yes. The West left a vacuum and Putin walked in. Uh, the, the, the West can do nothing without American leadership. And Obama made it clear that he was not offering leadership on this. As a result, we will have to probably reduce any sort of censure we might have expressed over, over the, the, the annexing of Crimea. Uh, Putin has an open hand now. And he is the one who is saying, I have the solution to this. I have have the key. And the Obama White House, which lost interest in foreign policy altogether, as far as I can see, has left the West in this position where it must be, it must appeal to Putin as the peacemaker of all things. So, well, we, well yeah, go, go, I'll come back to you. But, yeah, but I mean, you. But, okay, boots, well, on the, boots on the ground. I mean, are, are we likely to see an engagement between Russian troops and ISIS? Well, <laughs> reports are that there are people who already help um, Syrian troops there on the ground, and we know that there is air, there are aircraft, all sorts of uh, hardware. But um, the question is again going back to the internal message: Is the message that our ground, our troops are already there in Syria, are more important than what they're doing there? Mm -hmm. 
Ah, that, that's, so that's again, one, that, that's it, one yeah. thing. I think the, the important thing here is just a wider conversation between the West and Russia is that they probably are at a point where they think maybe going from this hybrid war uh, status, which has been ha simmering in the last year or so, to hybrid peace uh, kind, of, kind of condition, it is better. That's one thing. And secondly, uh, it's, it, nobody will get, again, look you know, in Putin's eyes and look for some kind of <laughs> peace there, but they, it will be a discussion between two boxes, between rounds. They will, um, they will appreciate each other and they will probably just understand that, you know, we are here for a reason, both of us. Yes, uh, yeah. And, 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 I mean, look at the alternatives. This is the thing we've discussed many times before. Obama says to people in the White House, you don't like my Syria policy, give me a better idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I disagree with Janet that Obama has wash his hands of foreign affairs. I mean, he had a major, major opening toward Cuba and a major deal with Iran, and the Iran fits into this Russia thing in a, in a partial, maybe dream world, utopian type way where you get some sort of grand coalition that can contain so-called Islamic State. It, it's possible, it's, it's far-fetched, it doesn't bear a lot of um, ideological tests, but it's it's certainly think, an interesting sorry, you idea. you think Obama wants some sort of coalition that involves Islamic State? No, 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 no against, no, against. No, I'm, oh, I I'm, see. I'm saying, I'm saying yeah. you're, assemb you're assembling yeah. a lot of enemies of Islamic State with oh, a comic interest, so. with a common yeah. interest in keeping them down. And it sounds far-fetched, but what if, what if in his last 18 months he comes up with a strategy that mm. actually uh, bears some fruit? Another thing which I think Putin will be trying to emphasize without saying a, lo a lot, he will be referring to a Libya example, which a failed state completely collapsed after Western mm. uh, yeah. incursion. And, you know, you, you mentioned the refugees and migrants and everything else, and you know that actually Libya has become one of those places through which refugees mm. go into yeah. Europe, right? So he will again, you know, try I to... I mean, he's got a... Uh, Putin, for whatever one thinks about him, Crimea and so on, he has got, a, as an analysis of where Western policy has gone wrong, he's not actually very different oh. from the, what you think in no, some ways. No, no, that's true, yes, because I think Western policy was a catastrophe. And the, inv the incursion in Libya was a catastrophe mm. because it was not seen through at all. They, right. they went in, they did some damage, and they left and there was no American involvement to speak of no American leadership so n naturally the whole thing fell apart and left a worse con situation than was uh, than uh, when they arrived you believe in really that the future for Europe is American leadership no, no. I'm oh. saying it's that the West, I'm saying that the West militarily the Europe. West is virtually helpless without American firepower and without American preparedness to lead and that but is just Libya a fact was that not is just a military question, you know, you could put as much hardware bomb, etc. Well, you I still mean, the, the Europeans were not prepared to follow up. I mean, what used to be called, you know, sort of uh, the development of a, of a, they were not interested in developing a failed state. They just went in, did the damage to the leadership, decapitated it and left. Mm. And that is the worst possible rest. And no, you well, have a million refugee. Talking possibly. about American leadership and decapitating, we're going to move on to Volkswagen, which has been decapitated in a different way.